side, uh, this episode is going to be a little bit different. Um, this is technically not a spirit in today's show. I'm checking out this lemonade drink by Good Stuff Beverage Company. Now, this is a company that makes drinkable cannabis products. So, but part of the presentation is that their products can be used as a substitute for alcohol. They use a lot of same the elements that a liquor company would use. For instance, they got these recipes and the way you mix them is like any other kind of uh, mix you would do, except you, instead of alcohol, you use their product. So it's gonna be a little bit different, uh, hence this shirt, because fishbone, marijuana, I mean, kind of goes together. So let's get into it with the stats. At a serving size of 1.2 fluid ounces, that's uh, 15 calories, zero grams total fats, zero milligrams of sodium, three grams of carbohydrates, three grams of sugar, and four milligrams of THC. This product overall has a two milligram of CBD and it delivers an indica strain of THC, which is for a calming effect versus just their products that have a sativa strain for energy. Here's a little bit of the history of this company. Um, Good Stuff is a relatively young company. Uh, it was founded in 2015 by mm -hmm. Matt Grimm and his business partner, Billy Roberts. But the history of Good Stuff starts with Matt. Uh, his personal story is a, sort of a common one. When he's, he was a kid, he wanted to be a business guy and make money. And he accomplished those goals and he worked in his 20s in like various types of businesses, but he became burnt in that lifestyle. And in the end, he found it to be less fulfilling than he thought it would be. Go figure, chasing just money for money's sake isn't that fulfilling. Um, so he decided to take a new path. Uh, he moved to Asia for a couple of years and he started tai, studied Tai Chi and meditating and doing yoga. And then when he returned back to the States, instead of doing back to the typical business stuff and doing back in the rat race, he decided he wanted to help people and communities. And so, and he wanted to take care of the elderly and he went and taught preschool. And though he wanted to avoid all things sales and business in this new life, he still sort of had that business part of him. Makes sense. And to quote mm -hmm. Matt, um, the social work was good for his heart, but eventually he tired of being broke, which is fair. In 2015, he attended the MJ Bazanic Vegas convention, and he came away feeling that there was a business opportunity as well as an activist vibe in the cannabis industry. So besides creating their product line and building the company brand, Good Stuff also gives away like hemp-based CBD pro products to people who suffer from like chronic pain but can't afford the expensive treatment. And that's how he likes to give back to people now. Some of, of the ideas behind the product is that they want to offer people the ability to consume their cannabis through drink versus other methods. And he thinks that has certain advantages. Um, he claims that calm you feel affects faster. They use something called nano emulsion technology, which makes the cannabis molecule smaller, and so it can get to your bloodstream faster. And this says that for most people, this effect will happen within 10 minutes, potentially even faster. Um, and then, you know, some people would just rather drink versus smoke or do any other kind of uh, cannabis products. I, for one, you know, I've used CBDs and cannabis products. I've smoked in the past. It's not my favorite because I just don't like the coughing and all that. And, I'm more into edibles and I'm going to see if I'm like this. And I tend to use it just to go to sleep, not really so much for recreational use. And when you take edibles, um, until you really figure it out, it can be varying degrees of success. Like I had to time it out so that um, I prepared ahead of time and so I can make sure it worked when I wanted it to work. So hopefully this will be something easier than even edibles and quicker and more effective and just more consistent. So let's get to the review. All right, let's start with the packaging. Um, pretty cool, it's got this sort of modern take on an old jazz style. It's got these animal characters that are you know, like kind of a New Orleans type character. The one tickle I have has got this pretty cool looking pink burst color. I don't know if that's a fox, it looks like playing a saxophone. It's, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's like a modern take and an old timey look. They have Okay. Not the easiest. Maybe you just twist. Oh, that's it. So it's got serrated also down here, even though it's other. So that actually, my bad, is actually pretty smart. Assuming that it stops. Oh, and there's a squeeze. Okay, so eventually I figured it out. So you just twist to break the seal and then push down. So it's kind of like a 
like in medicine bottles to protect the make sure kids don't get into it, which makes sense. Now here's the interesting thing. How do you drink this, especially straight? So I did a little look at, did a little investigating because this is right in here about the dosing. One cap is two milligrams of THC, five caps is 10 milligrams of THC. You know, I gotta go to work tomorrow so I can't get too crazy. Um, so it just says you can enjoy it as is or use as a mixer, but I mean, as is, I can't ex imagine they expect you to drink a whole entire bottle in one sitting or even in an hour if five caps worth gives you 10 milligrams of THC, you would be baked or high or whatever out of your mind. So since I got to be smart about this, I'm gonna do, see if I can get the rest of this plastic off. Yeah, I'm just gonna do one cap full. Cause I first wanna just taste it and give that part of the review. That seems hardly anything as far as volume and drinking. So hopefully it's enough to get Aroma wise, it's really nice. It's kind of like a good artificial cotton candy strawberry smell. Mm, that's good. Um, the appearance, it's okay. It's kind of a milky, cloudy kind of thing, which I guess if you make strawberry lemonade, it's cloudy and milky too, depending how you make it. Okay. There we go, let's go for the flavor first. Hmm. So you definitely taste the marijuana once you put it on your tongue. Like it didn't smell anything at all marijuana. It smelled like strawberry, cotton candy, strawberry. But once you taste it, there's hardly any strawberry feel. It's, if you know what marijuana smells like, it smells what it tastes like, so, or it tastes what it smells like, I should say. Um, which, you know, if you don't like that smell, I don't think you're gonna like the taste. I don't mind it in the right um, setting, but wasn't expecting that. I was expecting something more strawberry and definitely just felt like it drank the plant. So mouthfeel, hmm, I gotta drink a little bit more. It's a light, medicinal, I would say in a good way, kind of like sometimes Gin is kind of a, got that medicinal, or absinthe got that medicinal kind of taste to it. It's fine if you like that. If you don't like gin or anything like that, you might not be into that. It is a, a kind of a pleasant medicine-y kind of gin-like taste. And the mouthfeel, smooth. It's not gritty or anything like that. Now this is a tough one. Usually this is the buzz factor. Here we're talking about, I guess, the high or the calming factor. Uh, I'll let you know if anything changes throughout the video, but you know, obviously it's too quick even if it's the 10 minute fast acting. Um, God, I don't want to drink too much. Like I said, I got work, but I kind of feel like I need a little bit more just to get an idea. Hopefully I won't regret this. It's not bad. It's not exactly as far as the flavor and the taste blowing my mind. But obviously another thing that's going to come into being a factor is um, how high or what kind of a buzz you get, or not a buzz, but yeah, I guess a high. And in this case, since it's meant to be calming, how well it does in that. But so far, okay. I'm kind of hoping it's a little bit more enjoyable and exciting in the mix section. So let's head off to that. So let's go over the ingredients really quickly. The first and main ingredient is obviously the good stuff, strawberry hibiscus drink. The next ingredient is one ounce of lemon juice, fresh squeeze preferred. But of course, if you wanna just grab the bottled or concentrate, that's fine, go ahead and do that. The next ingredient is five ounces of water, soda water, or ginger ale to taste. Me personally, I wanna go for the ginger ale because that's just what I prefer in my drinks. The next ingredient is 1.5 ounces hibiscus agave simple syrup. Now here's the thing, you can't actually buy that anywhere. I'll clarify a little bit later in the video, but for now, I'm gonna be substituting this wild hibiscus flowers and syrup and this agave syrup and combining them. We're also gonna need two strawberries. It's not listed in the ingredients section, but you're also gonna need ice. It didn't say how much or what kind of style as far as cubed or crushed, 
So just go with what you prefer. I'm just gonna go with the cute dice. Another thing I'm gonna point out is that I'm not gonna follow this recipe or this mix down to the letter. I'm just, you know, I'm not a bartender. I'm just some guy on the internet. And part of the reason is that some of the stuff to do it, uh, I, to be honest with you, I don't really want to do it. I feel just wanted something, a simplified version of it. And then sometimes I just don't have the exact same type of equipment that they say, which is the next part, the equipment you're gonna need. For example, it says to use a shaker tin. Well, I don't have a shaker tin. I only have a glass shaker, so we're gonna have to go with that. Uh, we're gonna use a high ball glass. I do have one of those, so at least I got that much. It also says to have use a muddler. I used to have one. I don't know where it went. I don't have time to get one, so we're just gonna use a good old-fashioned spoon. And it says to use a fine mesh strainer. Don't have that either, but so I'm just gonna use a sort of a regular household strainer. And then it says to use a bar spoon, which uh, I guess it's just for stirring, so we'll be fine with that. I'll use the regular stirrer that I have. So one of the ingredients you need is a hibiscus agave simple syrup. Like I said, that simply doesn't exist. I emailed the company, and to their credit, they got back to me, and uh, they said in the bottom left corner of this uh, recipe, there should be a recipe for how to make that. On this version, there's not. I know somewhere I saw on a digital version that they must have updated, and they do have little extra box that tells you how to make the hibiscus agave simple syrup. To sum it up, what they expect you to do is to take dried hibiscus flowers, which you can buy at a liquor store or online, boil them, and mix in the agave syrup, and then that's how you make hibiscus agave simple syrup. But I'll be upfront, I'm personally too lazy to do all that. I'm not gonna boil dried hibiscus flowers and then add in the agave syrup to get hibiscus flour, flour or syrup. Your mileage may vary, maybe other people, consumers would do that, but considering it's a marijuana-based product, not to stereotype people, but I just don't see a lot of consumers doing that. Uh, also to their credit, he sent me some other alternative recipes that seem simpler, but I'm gonna stick with this one. I'm just gonna improvise, experiment. But yeah, that'd be one thing I would say to them as far as this one. First of all, make sure all the new versions of this go out that actually have the box explaining that if you want that ingredient you're going to have to boil hibiscus flowers to get it and maybe rethink this particular recipe because i just don't see a lot of consumers like i said not to stereotype people as just potheads but most of them i don't think are going to want to do that when people want something simple something simple they can just make quick and easy you know most of us aren't bartenders i'm not a bartender as you can see so that explains that and we'll get down to actually making this. To start by muddling the fruit in the cocktail shaker for about 30 seconds to release the flavors. Okay, simple enough. I'm not gonna bore you with every single part of this. I might skip through this, but basically we're gonna take our strawberries and what basically that's saying is smash them up to get the aroma and the essence of that flavor. So I'll do that real quick. I'm gonna transfer this over. This would definitely be easier with an actual muddler. Just gonna get deep down in there. I just kept the stem on because you are gonna transfer this into your cups. So you don't have to worry about pulling out the stem. So I'm gonna shake for 30 seconds. Don't worry, you're not gonna see all 30 seconds of this. After you've done the muddling for 30 seconds and the shaking and all that, it says to add all the liquid contents into the same contact, cocktail shaker and add ice. So that's another thing you need is ice. They don't specify, I think it's to taste, but it'd be good if they had done at least some guidelines and then included that in the ingredients. Now it does tell you how many ounces of things you need. You can probably use any kind of kitchen utensil to do that. I do have a, one of these things, I forget what they're called, for actual bartending. So I got that be convenient. So it says one ounce of lemon juice. Yeah, unless you're a bartender or doing some kind of fancy presentation, I don't really think this is worth it to use fresh. I mean, I think the container lime and lemon juice works just as fine. It's just so much more convenient. And this is messy and a lot of work. And if their idea is to try this product and sit back and relax, I don't know if I want to put this much effort in getting one or two drinks. I'm not even halfway at this point. Yeah, fresh squeezed lemon juice may be preferred according to the recipe. But 
pre-squeezed, pre-contained is easier. Let's do the ginger ale next. This is obviously gonna be a lot easier than cutting up and squeezing fresh lemon. Says we need three ounces. Now just remember, this is called a jigger. Now for this part, all this is supposed to total one and a half ounces. So, I'm not sure how I'm gonna divide that. It actually has flower ch chunks or entire flowers there. So I'll do. So add one in total. That'll work. Yeah. I think I'll mostly do this flavor since this is called the strawberry hibiscus lemonade. And then I'll just use the agave to top it off. Half ounce of this. Again, the recipe doesn't really give us much guidance as far as how much ice to use. So I'm just gonna just do three because I don't want to go overdo it. You can always add more, you can't take it out. Next, we need to shake for about 15 seconds. This does have a built in strainer, but I'm gonna use the ordinary strainer here because I think that's probably closer to what they asking for. Next, we just strain it out. So we do that over ice. So again, it doesn't say how much ice. So I'm guessing it's the preference. I always like at least three. Actually, I almost forgot the most important part. <laughs> we need uh, two capfuls and then we'll reshake. Right. Let me give that another shake. It says if you want to be cool, you can double strain it. Again, I'm not really a bartender, don't really care. Just gonna do that once. And a garnish with a strawberry. Again, I'm not doing this for a bar or anything like that, so I'm gonna skip that. That's how you make the stra strawberry hibiscus lemonade. Wasn't uh, totally smooth, kind of an ugly pour, but like I said, I'm not a bartender. I just really wanna get the flavor and based the review on that. Uh, obviously we deviated from the mix a little bit. I uh, explained how that was necessary and that happens. And again, if you're at home doing it, you're gonna just kind of make do with what you have. Uh, if you're in a bartender or some kind of restaurant where you maybe would serve this, probably in California or someplace like that, you would make it look all presentable and have all the right equipment. But I'm just a guy here on the internet. The real question is how does it taste and how does it feel? Is it a good experience? So one other thing we got to do, a little stirring here. Hmm, so far so good. Hmm. I mean, it tastes great, but it's not too surprising, I think. So let's start with the aroma. I mean, it's got a better smell than it did when it's just the Indica Calm. I said Indica Calm was really it smelled like strawberry but then when you tasted it, it tasted like marijuana smells this smells also like strawberry but more natural probably because it has two actual strawberries crushed in there appearance wise it's fine it's got a nice color to it it's this it's not quite red, but it's just a deep color. It's got a nice little cloudiness to it. The flavor is great. Um, the marijuana taste is pretty much gone. You definitely can taste that there's a lot of sugar because of the syrups that are used and the strawberries. I'm gonna add a little splash of more ginger ale. Off. I like it a bit, a little bit more ginger ale than what the uh, mix calls for. It's a little bit more bite. Feels good in the mouth. It's very refreshing. It's very light. 
I'm filming this in October, but it's still plenty warm here, so this is really enjoyable. It's pretty hot and uncomfortable to film like this, so that's something cool after all. Moving around and getting every setup was really nice. Now, again, this would be the part where I tell you about the buzz factor, but it's more about the cannabis factor, and I can't really say too much about that just now. They do claim that it hits you within 10 minutes or less, so again, I'll jump in and add another part to this if, uh, if it succeeds or fails on that, or if I manage to get a good night's sleep but compared to my other edible stuff that I use to help me calm down during the night. So here's the part where I'm jumping in to update you on the cannabis factor. It said that it would kick in 10 minutes or less. For some reason on my first drink of the Good Stuff lemonade, it took considerably longer, close to an hour I would say. But after every time after that that I tried it, it seemed to work pretty quick. 10 minutes seems about right. So I kept drinking from that bottle fairly regularly and yeah, I would say it would, could be a possible replacement for any other sleep aid that I like. I normally take the gummies. But in the end, I think it probably is better off as some kind of recreational drink. I don't know though if there's something you would buy and just use just for yourself. Cause like I mentioned in the video so far that to enjoy one whole bottle on your own in a, one sitting seems kind of not was intended. I think the idea is that you buy a bottle and maybe it's something you're going to share and make a few mixed drinks out of it because you can get quite a bit out of that at least I would imagine from the directions for that mix alone you could probably get at least four maybe five drinks out of that. So I think that's probably the way is the, I would probably use it in the future if I ever want to do some recreational cannabis enjoyment. As a sleep aid, it's a possibility but in the end it's just easier to pop in a gummy and enjoy it. But um, the kind of buzz factor or the high that I got that was generally uh, nice. It's, you know, it helped me get to sleep, so it did work in that sense. And that's all I gotta say about the marijuana uh, factor there. Overall, this is a good mix. Again, we deviated from what they specified. Um, I'm mildly a, a curious of what if it would taste like. It would be different if you follow it down to the letter including boiling the hibiscus flowers, but unless somebody does it for me, I'm not gonna try it. If you tried it and you got the updated recipe card that has the instructions for how to boil it and all that, great. Um, let us know in the comments. I'm not gonna try that. Uh, I think my improvisation of the different types of syrup worked out just fine. So that is the Good Stuff Beverage Company's uh, Strawberry Hibiscus Lemonade. They're Indica Calm. Um, I think it was great. Uh, would you be interested in trying something like this? Uh, if you are a cannabis drinker or not, would you consider a drinkable cannabis drink? Um, it's a different type of buzz compared to an alcohol, but if it's enjoyed responsibly, would you consider it and take a chance? Uh, let me know, and until the next time, enjoy the spirits inside responsibly.